What's going on guys, Bizize here and into this video we will learn what are the most important fundamentals to master your teamfighting. The lack of confidence and knowledge of how to play teamfights hold back a lot of the new players but also for those who are more experienced at the game and it causes them losing the games because they don't know how to teamfight. Who do we need to focus? What's the win condition? They simply don't know that. So today I will be sharing with you the most crucial secrets on how to teamfight like a pro player. Before we get started, if you find value in the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video and hit the notification bell if you want to make sure you don't miss out any bit of new content on how to get better in League of Legends from my channel. So let's get started. When trying to improve your teamfighting skills, you should think about two different factors that are manifest inside of you. One, you should have a plan and think ahead on how you want to play the teamfight. When playing the teamfight, if you try to use your abilities by reaction or try to simply react to the skill shots that you need to dodge on the moment as the teamfight is played out, you will have 10 times less chances to win the teamfight. That's why you want to build a plan just before the game even starts. In the loading screen, you need to think about how do you want to play the teamfight, what is your job, how do you really want to play it, should it be front to back, should it be back to front. So let's examine one example on how to identify the win condition properly. In this particular situation, what do you think the team has Oriana should do? How do they want to play the team fight out? What about the enemy team? How should they play the game? Well, right here, if you answered Oriana and her team composition should play front to back, then you're right. So they do have Oriana on the mid lane, they do have the Kogmo as a carry, Jana that can protect the Kogmo, and they have pretty good engage with the Trundle and the Wukong. Darius Kane Pike is a composition that wants to dive in, so all what Jana and Oriana wants to do is they want to play with the Kogmo. So the Oriana win condition is to simply just play for the Kogmo, so is the Trundle, this has to, he has to do that, and so Wukong has to do that. What about the enemy team? What should they do to win the game? So if you answered they should dive in the backline and back, play back to front, then you were right. Before we go into why do they play back to front, let's remember that front to back means the, the team that plays front to back is going to hit the main tank, all of five people are going to hit the first tank and they're going to play uh, basically uh, hitting the closest target and just playing slow. Back to front meaning that the Pike and the Kane and Darius is going to try uh, to one shot the backline, is going to try to one shot the Kogmo, try to one shot the Janna. So back to front means that our assassins, the Pike, the Kane, uh, is going to try their best to really dive into the backline. So uh, it's very simple right here. The, the, this team composition has to play front to back and this team composition have to play uh, back to front. So that's how you assess the team fighting, how you should play the team fight in the game. So for example, if you play Pike right now, you need to be very specific. Hey, I need to kill Kogmo and I need to dive into the backline. If you play Kane right now, same thing. You want to dive into the backline. If you play Trundle right now, your win condition is to play for the Kogmo. So you want to use the pillar to protect the Kogmo. You really want to think about how do you want to play the team fights out in the loading. The second thing that you need to take into consideration is that you need to master your execution of the team. Obviously, you want to build and have a plan on how you are going to play the game, but the execution of it is really crucial to you. So in this video, I will be giving you 5 examples on how challenger players team fight on every single role. So let's get right into it. When challenger players team fight, they have 3 very crucial aspects that they think about before the team fight even starts. First of all, they understand their role as the champion they are playing. For example, if you play Kane or if you play a champion like Fizz, you want to dive into the backline. If you play, let's say, Vayne, you just want to stay safe in, the back, in your own backline and you want to play slow, hitting the closest target. So the first of all, you guys need to understand your role as a champ. You have to ask yourself, what is my champ designed to do? Second of all, challenger players understand their Tinka position. They understand very well what is the team composition designed to do. How do they really need to play the game out so the team composition can facilitate them winning the game. Again, as I said before, do we need to play front to back? What is the win condition? Who do we need to focus? What is what is uh, the main goal of the of the team composition? Should we poke? Should we play 1-3-1? Uh, Should we split push? You really need to understand your own team composition before even trying to really team fight and execute. 
And the third thing is that they understand really well the enemy team composition. Not only that they have a very good understanding about what is their champ designed to do, uh, what is their allied team composition designed to do, but they try to understand what is the enemy team composition designed to do. Because maybe our team composition is to poke, but their team composition is to all in. Let's say they have Alistar, Wukong, Shivana, then they have Freeze mid lane and they have Jungle Kane. They need to engage, they need to do something. So when you play a poke composition, you need to also understand the enemy team composition uh, win condition in order for you to actually play around it and win the game. So three things. One, understand your role as a champion try to think about what is your champ designed to do two understand your own team composition think about what are the most important uh, things that we need to consider in uh, when team fighting with our team composition and three understand the enemy team composition think about the win condition of the enemy team so you can play around it okay in the next examples we're going to examine five really important team fights of five different pro players here we're going to analyze them based on the three aspects that we talked about let's see how the challenger player team fights and let's see what do they do to actually excel team fighting uh, like a pro let's go in the first example we're going to examine what the best jungler in europe is doing with his champion so right here he is playing pantheon in this particular team composition get on top ari mid lane caitlin ad carry karma support against lulu affilius on ad carry vagar and kindred dragas so if you are Panther right now, what do you think your job is in this thing composition? What should you do or how should you play the team composition? So let's take a closer look on the three variables that we need to take into consideration. So first of all, what is his design? What is his champion design to do? Well, Pantheon he just wants to really dive into the backline and he needs to play super, super aggressive. Uh, he is a very, very good champion to snowball and in team fights he usually doesn't want to play front to back, he wants to play back to front. So, uh, this is basically the first thing. Pantheon is the champion that wants to dive in. Second of all, what is the team composition designed to do? So, we do have an Ari, so we have a good follow up if we dive into the backline. We have a Garen that is pretty good if we dive into the backline. And we do have a Caitlyn that has the ultimate that if we dive into the backline, in case we need some extra damage, the Caitlyn is there. So, the team composition is designed to go in and play pretty aggressive around the Pantheon. And then the third thing is you need to also think about the enemy team composition, right? So the enemy team composition is a very scaling composition with Vegar, Aphelios, Lulu uh, as carries. And right here, what should the enemy team do right here and what should the team of the best jungle in the world do right here? So it's very simple. The Pantheon and Balrang right now should just dive into the backline because he has a Ari and he's playing a Pantheon with a Garen. The enemy team should just scale and just protect the Aphelios with the Lulu and just protect the Vagar. So the enemy team should just protect their carry, play back to front, play slow or not back to front, front to back sorry, and play, play very very slow. And this thing composition, the Pantheon thing composition should dive into the backline. So let's see what is the best jungler in Europe going to do right here uh, with the Panther? So we can see that he instantly ults into a team fight, immediately into the backline, instantly one shots the Aphelios, and let's see what's going to happen. Well, they just win the team fight. Obviously, the enemy team just overextended a little bit there, but he exactly knew what he should be doing in a team fight, and he exactly knew how he wants to play the game out. So we can see that they are going to get Nashor, and after they do get better Nashor, as we can see, just with one team fight, the game just exploded. There are five. 5k 4k gold ahead right now it's going to be very difficult for the enemy team to win in the next example we are going to analyze the support player so if you're Jana right now based on the variable that we need to take into consideration when acknowledging what we should be doing in the team fight what should Jana do in this team composition so if you're Jana in team composition it's pretty simple Jana is an enchanter so you want to play around the carry. So usually you just want to play around the carry, stay behind him and just play slow. In this case, it's Tristana, it's her AD carry. Particularly for this specific situation, we can also see that Tristana is on the bottom side. So she should play around the others four or the others three in the team right now. So the job of the, the Janna is to protect the carry, to play like an enchanter, play behind of the carry and just save them. And right here, what should her team composition do right here? So they have Gwen, Yorick, Tistana, Viego, and Jan. 
all what they need to do is well they need to let Yorick split push uh, they can also let Gwen split push so they can play a 1-3-1 uh, composition and the Tristana, Janna and Diego in the later stages they need to stay mid lane so that's how you should be thinking before the game starts the enemy team well it's pretty simple they have twitch lulu so they can very very easy outscale the enemy team composition they want to play around twitch they want to get twitch ahead and they want to scale so that's how they want to basically play Lee Sin wants to play through um, uh, through twitch uh, after level six after level five because until level until level six they can't really gank the Twitch, they can't really gank Tristana, Janna, Mecha. It's even though they have a Lee Sin in the jungle and you can say that they have a lot of pressure, the Lee Sin should pressure the top lane and mid lane win condition. Just because if the Renekton is winning really, really hard on top lane and the Silas is winning really, really hard on mid lane, then Twitch can also have time to scale. So the win condition of this team composition is get top ahead, get mid ahead so Twitch can scale. The, th the win condition of this team is uh, play 1-3-1, one, one, play around split push, get Tristana ahead and Janna's job particularly is to see protect the team and if Tristana is around she should play around Tristana so let's see what she's going to do right here in this situation remember that this is a challenger game so she comes on the mid lane she tries to uh, go for the roam because Tristana on the bot lane was completely safe right here we can see that she completely stays with the team she saves the Gwen and she just completely saved the Gwen completely carries this if she wasn't here then Gwen was dead so usually as Janna, you want to play with your AD carry. But in this situation, since AD carry was safe on the bot lane, she roamed mid lane, she played around the second carry, which is Gwen. So the Janna's job in this game was to play around the carry. Not necessarily the Trana, Tristana, but she had to play around the carry. In the next example, we are going to be analyzing a challenger mid lane main. So let's see if you know how to answer how can and how should this Zerat play in this particular case? He has an Ivron in the support role, Aphelios on AD carry, jungle, Wukong, and top lane Renekton against a team composition that with, has Gnar, Belvech, Lissandra mid lane, Ezreal, and Yu. So theoretically, the Zerat is a champion that wants to play slow. He wants to poke and he doesn't want to do crazy stuff. His team composition right here, we can see that Wukong wants to dive into the backline, Renekton wants to dive into the backline. So Zerat is most likely going to get access to the enemy backline. He can also try to ulti uh, the enemy Ezreal if Wukong is going to go for a crazy fight. But in general, if you play at Zerat, you just want to play safe, front to back and slow. How should the enemy team play right here? What do you think do they have to do right here against Zerat? Well, it's pretty simple. Lissandra has to dive into the backline to kill this Zerat and you and she has to really uh, kill the Zerat. They have to really play back to front. Ezreal can just kite back, but Lissandra's job is to really screw this Zerat up. So Zerat should know that and Zerat should be aware of the fact that Lissandra's job is that he she needs to really kill him. So he has to take lens, which by the way, since it's challenger, people, they knew that they have to play, take lens and they really have to be careful of the engage of the Lissandra and the engage of the Gnar with the Mega. So we can see what the Zera did in this situation, he tried to poke and poke and poke and as he's poking, he was very 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 safe, he did the poke at the max range, so let's see what's going to end up happening right here. So what he tried to do, he really tried to go for even more poke and then he just ended up dying. So what was his mistake right now? So he knew that his job is to poke the Lissandra, but he didn't really respect the fact that Lissandra can engage on him. So sometimes in League of Legends and most of the cases when you play a carry, you need to acknowledge the fact that being safe is actually and staying alive is actually more important than just doing a little bit more damage. You can lower the, the damage per second that you can, you can do if you actually higher or lower also the risk of you dying there. So not dying is by far the most important things on those ch kind of champions like Sarah. So right here, he knew that he has to poke the Lissandra, but he wasn't fully aware that he just has to play safe and not get all in by Lissandra and always respect the distance between him and her. The next example is going to be an example from rank 3 AD carry, one of the best AD carries from the solo queue ladder on Europe. So if you're Zeri right now, what should you be doing and what should you take into consideration before going into this fight right now? So if you're Zeri right here, since you're an AD carry, you know that you want to play mainly front to back, particularly with the Zeri. So, 
front to back is crucial especially because they do have the Lissandra and the Renekton and the Trundle that can instantly dive into the backline so you really want to play safe he really wants to play safe right here since he's playing Zeri. he does have a Janna and Janna well she's challenger so she knows that all what she has to do is to protect her carries and also the Wukong should play around that the Sejuani should play around that so let's see how a challenger player is playing out those team fights let's see what they need to do so we can see that the enemy team right here, they really know what they should be doing. They should engage, they should dive into the backline, they really should go in, they should do, should not just play safe. They do it right here. Zeri knows that the enemy team knows what to do and she actually is aware of the fact that she should play uh, front to back. Janna is protecting the Zeri, enemy team is just trying to engage and engage and engage. And as we can see right here, after they engage, they actually ended up losing. So the challenger AD carry coming up uh, right here winning the fight just because he really knew what the enemy team composition is designed to do and he really knew that as an AD carry he just has to stay behind and just deal as much damage. That doesn't mean you always pay uh, front to back on AD carry because there are champions like Kai'Sa that you can dive into the backline if it's a high chance play but usually that's what you should be doing as an AD carry. Another challenger game, another challenger, this time a top laner, this is by far the biggest the hardest example that i found let's see if you actually know what this champion should do what is this champion designed to do right here so uh, otto omne on cannon in this team composition against uh, the enemy team composition right, right here what do you think otto omne should do right here he has ezreal on ad carry he does have kazik jungle renekton on the top lane what should otto omne do right now This is a little bit more complex. So Otto Amne has two options. So with Cannon, he can definitely look to engage. Uh, but since the enemy team has a lot of disengage, he has the Rakan, he has the Varus ultimate, it's pretty difficult for him to engage actually right away. Especially because he knows that uh, Ezreal is a very mobile champion and we also have Yumi to disengage. He can actually do something a little bit more complex that many challenger players do. So if the enemy team decides to engage on the Ezreal and Ezreal is just going to look to cleanse away, E away, flash away, an enemy team is going to be 10 times more overextended so then the cannon can actually have a better chance to go in. So in other words, Otto Amne doesn't want to engage, he just wants to use the Ezreal as a bait. He will need to let Rakan and Varus and Yasuo commit really, really hard on Ezreal. Ezreal is going to escape with Cleanse Flash. And then when they are very, very committed into the tower right here, then Cannon can look for a Flash play. So it's basically just using the Ezreal as a bait instead of playing for uh, the engage. So let's see how he's executing this. So we know that Ezreal Yumi has a huge disengage potential. So that's why Cannon can actually do this play. Of course, if you play with the Vayne and you do this, you're pretty much in. With the Vayne, she can't really escape the, the combo of this team composition so you would have for a cannon she will have to engage and she can't use the vein as a bait but in this particular example if you answered hey cannon should use the, the Ezreal as a bait then you were right obviously right here he goes in the enemy team is pretty pretty overextended right now although Omni goes in tries to flash tries to uh, Zonias tries to use everything unfortunately this game was like they were already very 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 behind and the fight is lost but you've got the concept right here so you really want to take into consideration three and only three things when you team fight first of all what is my champion designed to do think about if you should engage if you should peel uh what is your champion designed to do does he needs to play aggressive in the early game do, do you need to snowball like try to play around the dynamic of the of the champion do you need to play front to back do you scale you want to think about those things second of all you want to be aware of what is your team composition designed to do do we need to engage do we need to poke do we need to play split push think about those things and think about what are the most important abilities that your team should hit and before starting a fight you really want to be aware of the ability of the cooldown of your teammates as well. For example, if you have any T-Birds, you always want to fight when she has the T-Birds because that's a very, very important thing to have in T-Fights. Really. And the third thing is try to understand the enemy's job win condition. You need to understand the enemy's job win condition in order for you to have perfect T-Fights.